If you're having problems getting the door hinges working correctly, you're not alone. In addition to the stock hinge parts, there's already at least two fixes that supposedly address issues that some folks have had, but I found that none of them actually solved my problem. In fact, once I figured out what the root cause of my problem really was, I was able to fashion my own solution, which ultimately was a far more rewarding process. But before we get into that, let's uh, take a quick look at how the battery door hinge and servo linkages are designed. All right, so each servo control door has two hinges, an upper hinge and a lower hinge. And each hinge consists of two parts, the hinge block, which is what is attached to the body, and then the hinge itself. Now, the hinge itself is attached to the hinge block and rotates around a little steel pin. I found these uh, two millimeter uh, rods and I just cut them down. It's about a half an inch in length. Um, but to put these together, uh, you just simply slot the hinge in and drop the pin down in there. And you wanna make sure that that pin sits in there nice and loosely because trust me, you're gonna be taking them back out again. So the upper hinge uh, just rotates freely. That's attached to the body right here. This is attached to the door and then it, the hinge works. And it's the bottom hinge that is intended to be uh, connected to a linkage uh, to the servo. If so if we take a closer look at the bottom hinge piece, you'll see that they all have this little slot in there. That's how you can tell the bottom hinge from the upper hinge. And that slot is intended to receive this, this little arrow shaped end from this servo rod, I think is what the part is called. This is printed out of flex, and this is intended to provide the linkage between the hinge uh, at this end and a custom printed servo horn, this guy here, which is what's actually attached to the servo. The idea being then that you take this end and you pop that impossibly small hole over this ridiculously large ball. More on that later. As for the hinge itself, um, apparently I'm not, I'm not alone in having difficulty uh, inserting this arrow end into this slot. Um, Mr. Badley suggests using a fine flathead screwdriver. I have tried with no luck. I have tried using uh, needle nose pliers to wedge it in there tried just about everything I can think of, and I've never been able to do anything but break this thin wall here. Um, so I never got this to work, um, but apparently neither did a lot of other people. And so recently I noticed that there was a new part in the, in the uh, file share, and it was a, f a single piece uh, a bottom hinge and servo rod. The idea being that, hey, you don't have to actually connect it here anymore, you can give this a try. Um, as you can see, it doesn't take paint very well. Uh, you can't really sand the flexible filament, but I'm willing to give this a try. So uh, the first experiment is going to be, let's see how this uh, flexible hinge works. And if it works, then uh, great. If not, uh, we'll see what else we need to do. So one other issue when it comes to using these combo servo horns that we have here is the cap end that goes on to the servo arm. It's got that little dome over top of it. And unfortunately the dome makes it so that it doesn't fit through this hole here. Um, so it forces you to either uh, enlarge this hole or have to feed this entire assembly up from inside the body, which is gonna be uh, a bit of a mess. So what I ended up doing was I just uh, chopped the top of the dome off of the piece so that I could put the assembly in uh, this way and get that into place. And now with that in there, uh, you can see how the, how, the linkage is, how the linkage is supposed to work. And we'll see how it performs. So here's the bread pan door with the flexible hinge assembly in there. And you can see right away that when that hinge isn't rigid, you get a lot of unnecessary play with this uh, mechanism here. And it just, it's just not, it's not gonna work. Get a better view here. 
All right, so here you can get a, a better view. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed, but essentially there's this play, there's flex in that hinge, which is gonna, you know, it's gonna be there no matter what. So um, yeah, this uh, all flexible solution just isn't gonna work. All right, so now the door has been reattached with just the stock upper and lower hinges. I've decided not to use any of the flex components for the linkage, and instead I've drilled a small hole in the lower hinge arm where I can connect a one millimeter rod that I can bend and make my own linkage. The nice thing with this is that I can easily remove it uh, if I need to do some work later. So it doesn't require me to take the entire door apart. And let's take a look and see how, this, how the stock hinges work. All right, from this angle, you should have a pretty good view of how well the door mechanism is working now. So, now with a rigid hinge at the bottom instead of the flex hinge, you see that the door is much more rigidly held to the body. There's no flex, there's no wobble, there's no weird movement back there. And the linkage is certainly able to pull that shut. But now you start to see the other issue that uh, is happening, and that is the door will not close all the way. Uh, and this apparently is something that's been happening to a lot of builders. Um, which is why there's another fix out there. Let me tell you a little bit more about that one. So apparently a number of other builders were experiencing situations where their doors were not closing all the way. And one of the changes that was done, uh, an updated piece was provided, and it's called lower hinge extra pull. And the difference between the two hinges, if you were to look at them, side by side. As you can see the angle in the back there is uh, different. The idea being that as the hinge pivots and opens, uh, the reason that the door wasn't closing was because the hinge couldn't go back quite as far. So the idea with this one here was, well, let's give it a little bit more of an arc range to go uh, to travel, and then it will pull the door a little bit more shut. So I thought, okay, I'll give that a try. So let's see what happens. All right, so now I've swapped out the stock hinges with two of the extra pull hinges. It didn't really make sense to just swap one of them out. Um, so I swapped both of them out. And just as before, I did drill a hole so that I could use my own custom linkage. So in theory, with these extra pull hinges installed, I should be able to close the door a little bit closer and have that gap uh, removed. But what we see is that the door is still not closing all the way. It's maybe a little bit better, not a whole lot better. And if we take a look inside, you can see where the hinge still has some room to travel. It's not binding against, against the edge of that uh, angled surface there. So there's something else going on, and this is where I started to realize that, you know, I need to take a different look at this and see if I can figure out what's really the problem. So the next thing I wanted to do was to try and figure out if the door, in fact, fit into the opening. So I removed the door from the hinges and just wanted to see if the door would, in fact, sit nice and flush. And clearly it can. There's no reason why this door shouldn't fit in here. So I decided uh, to take a look and see what was going on with the hinge. And when I looked around to see how everything lined up, that's when I realized that when the door is not attached to the hinge, the hinge itself does not line up exactly with the door. There's a little bit of misalignment there that when you screw the door onto the hinge and it pulls it tight, that force is what is, I think, creating the misalignment and keeping that door from shutting entirely. So I decided then that the solution was going to be to come up with my own hinge piece. And since I decided not to use the flex linkage, um, that in addition to solving this gap, I could replace the arrow slot with the hole for my wire linkage. So that's what I did. 
So I am by no means an expert in Fusion 360, but uh, I think I will try and put together a video showing how I went about doing this because uh, I looked through the Fusion 360 files that are available to dedicated Patreons, and I did not see the extra pull model or the combined uh, servo arm and hinge in the 3D model files. So as far as I know, both of these updates exist only as STL files. And when you have STL files, you really can't edit their geometry, at least not very easily, and not to the degree that, that I wanted to be able to do. Uh, so I was able to find a way to import the STL file into Fusion 360 and use that as a basis to rebuild and reconstruct my own geometry based on that. So you can see that this is the extra pull angle. I figured the extra angle certainly wouldn't hurt to have. Um, but you see here, there's no more uh, of the little slot that's in there. And instead, I now have my uh, linkage hole. But the main difference is you see that um, the difference in the thickness. Um, and that little bit uh, I'm hoping is what's going to make the difference. It's important to know that um, uh, in terms of the, ge the geometry, that this bottom edge is in fact curved to match the body radius. So that is not a flat surface. So this was essentially extruded further in the, in the Z or outward direction. And uh, so I went ahead and created a bunch of these. And uh, let's see if installing these makes any difference with uh, how well the door closes. All right, so we've now reattached the door, this time using the custom hinges uh, that have the thicker arm that attaches to the door, as well as the linkage hole. It's in both of them, even though it's only used on the bottom. But let's see if this makes the difference that I was hoping it would. It does. The door closes perfectly. And if we look inside, you see that there's still technically a little bit of rotational room for the hinge, but it is securely fastened to the door and there's definitely no, no gap at all. So that finally fixes the problem. So it's worth mentioning that I did have this same problem on all three of the servo controlled doors. Uh, you had the other bread pan door, uh, the data port door, um, the charge bay door. I did that one a little while ago and I didn't have the same problem uh, on that one. Not sure exactly why uh, they are. It is a different hinge block. So maybe the geometry is a little bit different. This also does have a magnet that helps to hold it in place. So maybe that helped uh, to rectify the issue. But uh, the same uh, custom hinge piece that I did for the one bread pan worked for all three of the servo controlled doors. Uh, I will probably go ahead and make my custom hinge uh, available as an STL file. Um, I'm not really sure if this particular solution is going to work for everyone. Uh, that maybe there are some dimensional inaccuracies in my printer that caused this misalignment. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I think the more useful aspect of it is that uh, I was able to figure out what the root cause was and come up with my own solution. So um, when I can, I will post the video that details how I went about customizing the file from just the STL, and uh, I will post that update. But anyway, uh, I hope this uh, will come in handy for some folks as they go in and start to add the doors and servo mechanisms to their droid. I will post another video um, where I go into a little more detail about the linkages and how I set those up. Uh, I did the same sort of servo saver linkages in my dome, and uh, I don't think I ever really detailed how those work. So um, I will uh, try and do that sometime in the coming days or weeks. That's it for now. Thanks.